This is Jerry Fry, audio historian of Pacific Pioneer Broadcasters. The following is the professional history of a PPB member told by himself in his own fashion on Monday, June 10th of 2013. These interviews are being recorded in order to compile firsthand a living history of the members of our organization and the stories of their professional experiences. Many of our members began in what is called now the golden age of radio and television, and this is an attempt to preserve as much data as possible for succeeding generations. Uh, this recording is not intended for broadcast without first obtaining permission from Pacific Pioneer Broadcasters. Uh, with me today in the CBS Studio Center in Studio City, California, is a gentleman on the board of the Pacific Pioneer Broadcasters named D. Baker. But D, I suspect that D wasn't your given name when you were born. It was. It was. It was. That's my middle name. Okay. Uh, my wife uh, goes by her middle name. She's from Chicago. I'm from Iowa. We're Midwesterners. Ah. Uh-huh. And I think there must be something that was going on in the '40s that we always used the middle name. The middle name came out. Well, that's a I good... I kept it. <laughs> okay. And your first name is just uh, something you use when you sign it, I suspect. For checks and taxes. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, well, let's start. Where you? Where were you born? And uh, oh. how what were the circumstances besides the fact that your mother was pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> well, she... Uh, this was back in 1937 I was born, mm-hmm. in April. And I lived on a farm with mud roads with a country doctor. And this was where again? Iowa, Yarmouth, Iowa. Yarmouth? Not close, not too bad, far from Burlington, Iowa, and south of the Quad mm-hmm. Cities on the river. My father was born in Aurora, Iowa. Well, there you know then. Yep. Uh, so I was born in April, and uh, the country doctor lived in town about five miles away, and it was so raining that he got stuck in the mud, really? in the r- oh, muddy yeah. river. So I was born in the living room. Oh. Yeah. And uh, we lived in a regular farmhouse, you know, no plumbing. And uh, Th- that, that, wasn't the, that wasn't unusual in those days. Not then, no. Oh. no. I think we got plumbing in about 1947 or something like that. Mm-hmm. And of course we got our first TV about then, you know, it was a nice little round picture. Right. <laughs> you know, and we put a cellophane in front that was red, green, and blue, gave and that gave us color. our color. Yeah. yeah. So I cut back a ways. Uh, rabbit ears or an- antenna oh, on the are roof? Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> rabbit, rabbit ears were all in vogue at that time. That was the only thing available yeah. at that time. So, anyway, so I, uh, at the age of eight, I loved uh, dancing because my sister took. So I started to beg and borrow and uh, find rides to go take class. Oh, really? So I studied dance ever since I was eight. For heaven's sake. What, what kind of dance did you start out with? Well, all in one hour, did tap, mm-hmm. ballet, and acrobatics. Okay. <laughs> so I did that a number of years yeah. and uh, performed with my older sister once in a while at basketball uh, uh, timeouts and things like that, you know, so mm-hmm. we did. Pretty good, and so uh, and I pantomimed Al Jolson's story, uh, uh-huh. so I toured all over, including the Grand uh, Hilton Grand Hotel in Chicago. Really, get that far away for a convention with mm-hmm. three thousand REA convention folks. Mm-hmm. Rural, what is it? Rural, Electrical, elec- rural uh, electrification that's administration. It. Something like that. Something yeah, like that. it was large. It was about three, four thousand people in the banquet. So I mm-hmm. performed on the dais table. Okay. And that gave me the emphasis that I wanted to do that. Yeah. You kind of got in your blood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Mom and Dad took me to a theater uh, where we saw, I can't remember the movies, but Buster Keaton was in the Oleo Act. Mm-hmm. And they had all these comedians, you know. So I got the bug. and uh, so. But your father, your father was a farmer, I assume. Oh, yeah. My whole family. Your whole family. Uh, family of five. Mm-hmm. Uh, my two brothers became farmers, continued. And my sisters uh, live within 15 miles of home. You know, they mm-hmm. got married and they had their own things. Was, so, this, was this corn uh, in that area? Oh yeah, corn, beans, mm-hmm. oats, Angus cattle. Oh really? And uh, Herf- uh, Hamp- Hampshire pigs. Uh-huh. I was a, a 4-H guy and had pigs. 
Yeah. I raised pigs. Yeah. As a kid, I'm sure you had your farming <laughs> chores to take care I, of. Yes, we all did. And so yeah. everyone had to pitch in. That's right. And I, I was since I was the youngest one, I helped mom around the house making soap and uh, all that real old stuff. Yeah. My gosh, <laughs> making soap. I, I, I remember during World War II that people had to do that because That's right. you couldn't just buy it. That's right. We had the ration. Uh, what was the uh, S, not S and H. That was another thing. S and H green stamps. Green stamps. But it was food stamps from the government. You yeah. Know, that you could buy so much sugar and so forth. Mm -hmm. Rationing stamps. Rationing. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So I graduated from high school. and I had a very good high school. Uh, how far? Time. Did you, how far did you have to go to high school? Oh, just about uh, five miles. Oh. I was a bus driver, so uh -huh. I also picked up kids and took them to school. You okay. Know, through my high school. And um, so, let's see, where was I? Well, you were going to high school, high school and what? what, uh, what oh, yeah. Uh, it was, well, what it was, what I, the point I wanted to make was uh, my classmates were very kind to me, even though I danced. You know, uh, back then, it, dancers were not really, nobody knew too much about them, you know. Right. And thought it was a little weird because uh, my brothers were all. Baseball and basketball and all right. that athletics. So were my sisters. So, but I was different. Nobody realized that uh, dancing can be as athletic as any other sport. And it is. Yeah, really, yeah. from and more so in some cases. That's right. So anyway, I went to Iowa University at Cedar at uh, Iowa City. In, in high school, let's go back to that. Okay. What, what did what did you uh, pick up on in high school? And yeah, you danced. You, did you get into dramatics or anything like that? We didn't have dramatics. Oh, I didn't I, have it. it was a consolidated school. Ah. Kindergarten through 12th in one building. Okay. Only four stories. And um, so I took piano and I sang and I danced and at all the functions at, at school. Mm -hmm. you know? Did you and, perform as a dancer and oh, yeah. a singer? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Your sister also? Yes. So we had, you know, um, anyway. So, for graduating, I went to uh, Iowa City University, and I waited tables to help pay for my tuition and things in the dormitory. And I was there two, uh, two years. So I worked in the mess hall and to pay for, help pay for my college. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was a music major, and I connected with dancers and Modern dance because that's all they offered in college. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't major in it; majored in music. You sang in the choir, I assume. Uh, played piano and saxophone. Oh, saxophone too. Saxophone too. And when, did, when did you start sax? Oh God, when sax was... not sax. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it was in junior high is where I started uh -huh. that, and that was the saxophone was left over from my sister, you know. And oh, we were ha had had. Hand it downs. So I'm the last of the hand me downs. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so I got everything. Um, so uh, anyway, at Iowa University, the third oh, and the year before that is when we were uh, participating in the Rose Bowl, mm. and we lost to Oregon, but we came out to California, the marching band, which I was in with my sax. Right. And we went to Occidental, we went to all these college campuses for rehearsals, and it was like below zero in Iowa City. The river was frozen because you walk over to get to class. Mm -hmm. And when I was out here uh, for the Rose Parade and Rose Bowl, we were in t-shirts. Oh. And guess what I decided? <laughs> You wanted to stay in Iowa. <laughs> yeah, not because we went. To, one of the items they took, did for us is they took us to the Moulin Rouge, which was uh, a nightclub in, on Sunset Boulevard. Right, I remember uh, that. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And so I decided that's where I wanted to be. In the Moulin Rouge. You bet. Yes. So I, I went home and I, my folks and my family came up and talked, tried to talk me out of coming out. Because I was going to take a bus, mm -hmm. and so they promised they would bring me out if I stayed one more semester. Okay. So I st I was there for two and a half semester, uh, two and a half years, mm -hmm. and then mom and dad brought me out to California. Drove you out. Drove me out to Hollywood, and within a week, they helped me get an apartment. I started classes at uh, uh, Eugene Loring's Ballet School on. La Brea and Hollywood Boulevard. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And I had my first job at CBS in the mailroom within a week. For heaven's sake. And what? that was it. You know. How did you learn about that then, in order to even apply for it? I had a friend <laughs> that I toured with when I was in uh, college and high school for the summer out of Chicago to perform in State Fair grandstand shows. Oh, for heaven's sake. So I danced on a, on a, a grandstand tour you know, mm -hmm. out of Chicago. So she... Uh, she's the only person I knew out here. So, of course, I was making contact, and she says, I know somebody who's an usher at CBS. I'll see if I can get him to recommend you. Hmm. He did. So, so Rosemary, Rosemary, I can't remember her last name. She was head of, head of uh, labor relations, and she hired me within a couple of days. Now, this was CBS down on Sunset Boulevard? On, uh, on uh, Fairfax and Beverly. Oh, that uh, Sullivan City was already... Yes, Built. yes okay. it was, okay. yeah. And they also, uh, on my trip out to the Rose Parade, they had uh, the band as a guest on Art Linkletter. Mm -hmm. And so we uh, marched in the executive parking lot for Art Linkletter's show. Uh -huh. They took the cameras out on the ledge. And, and, sure. You know, so it uh, all kind of helped me get a little uh, hooked to there. Boy, that was... Uh, <laughs> That was a wonderful break. It was, it yeah. was. So I worked at CBS for three months, and then I got my first job with Roland Dupre, which some people may remember. And uh, I was working with Jerry Jackson, who became the choreographer for the uh, Tropicana for many, many, many years. And it was all for a lounge act at, CBS, at uh, Vegas, you know. Did you say Roland Dupre? I don't uh -huh. know. I Roland. Don't know. He, was, he choreographed a lot of movies. Oh. You know. Uh, and he had a big studio on the corner of, uh, of Sunset and La Brea. Uh -huh. And every professional went to school there. Hmm. You know. And so uh, I was in this act, and I was, we were rehearsing eight hours a day, not getting paid. All right. And we had it almost ready, and the agent comes in and says, I can't get it booked. Uh, it's over. Uh-oh. So then I waited a little while, and then I auditioned for the Moulin Rouge in the fall. <laughs> that was in the back of your mind all along. All along, all along. <laughs> so uh, I needed the job so bad. So sure. I just, before the audition, I'll tell you this a little bit. I went to the Methodist Church in the corner of Highland and... Uh, fountain mm -hmm. and I meditated for a while then I went to the Moulin Rouge and auditioned and it was probably a couple three hundred guys took all afternoon the next week and I kind of sprained my ankle the next week I got a call that I'd been accepted mm. so mm. I started working at the Moulin Rouge you sprained your ankle what, while auditioning, auditioning uh -huh. oh dear but you just keep going like sure. nothing happened mm -hmm. Now, what kind of dancing were you doing at this point? What uh, Jazz. All jazz? Progr you know, regular mm -hmm. jazz, just like they do in Vegas. No tap dancing anymore? Uh, no, I kept tap dancing anyway, but not in the show. Yeah. You know. And so I did that, and uh, I did that for almost a year. And then the Moulin Rouge closed, and we went down and danced on pontoons at SeaWorld. Mm -hmm. Well, when you were working at Moulin Rouge, you uh -huh. must have worked with some big, pretty big acts there, huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, Sammy Davis. Sammy Davis, too. Oh, uh, yeah. The McGuire Sisters. Uh -huh. uh, oh, there was just a huge number of people, uh, acts that you know. Yeah. You know, big stars. Because that was the time that we had three production numbers, and we had starring acts mm -hmm. performing in between the dance numbers. Now, as a kid from Iowa, was that pretty big stuff to you? I mean, of course it was. I would imagine, <laughs> I would imagine that the, that took some use to. <laughs> Away from the cattle and into the club? Are you kidding? No milking cows? Or no. And the mafia sitting out there in the lounge uh, uh, having stogies and a little martini or something. I don't know. We had a great time. It was a very interesting period of time. That was only the movies. It really wasn't yeah, No, no. Really a way <laughs> mafia out there. Uh, well, it was all Vegas people, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. So when that closed, then I got an audition. I got a uh, job with... What, wasn't that, excuse me, wasn't that where uh, Jack Bailey's Queen for a Day originated? Yes, it was. That's what I thought. I saw that, too. You did? Uh, I think when I came out for the uh, Rose Parade. Mm -hmm. I, they took us to see uh, Queen for a Day. Uh-huh. And I didn't realize, see, that it was the same place. Yeah. So. Little did you know you'd end up there. You bet. 
You bet. Well, that proves the old theory. Set your sights, and you're going to eventually make it. That's right. <laughs> I, uh, that was something I wanted to do since I was probably five years old, because mm -hmm. I liked Gene Kelly, Donald O'Connor, Fred Astaire. Sure. I loved all those good dancer people, you know. So I get, so anyway, uh, uh, then uh, after the Moulin Rouge, well, during that period of time, I also worked in television. Uh, I was a regular on Dobie Gillis mm. as one of the teen uh, high school kids uh, at the sock hops and things. Uh -huh. And then I did Spartacus. I was a dead soldier for oh, a day. Really? <laughs> and uh, what, oh, I did the tap dubbing for 12 guys on... Um, Gene Kelly's uh, special for NBC, and that's where you bring in a, a hardwood floor about three, four by six, uh -huh. and uh, you tap on that floor all the routine. Uh, and we o did it about ten times because there were twelve guys, uh -huh. and they would overdub it, and that's what we they used for the tap number with the cast. Huh. So that was pretty. That was very impressive to me. I'll yeah, bet to do that. So uh, they, they, when Gene would do the the actual t uh, tapping on camera. Well, it wasn't him. It was all twelve guys. Twelve guys. And we were. The, it was the opening number of his special. I see. Has anybody here seen Kelly? Kelly from the Emerald Isle. Well, there were twelve guys coming down NBC hallway, mm -hmm. and we'd stop at different stages, uh -huh. singing that number, and we'd come in. And Carol Lawrence was there, and we all tap danced together. Hmm. And that was what I tapped. I see. Dubbed for all those guys yeah. <laughs> that didn't know how to tap dance. Yeah. But they looked good. Yeah. Well, they <laughs> <laughs> They're was, good fakers, you know. That was the important part. Yeah, that's right. But that's all right. the sound came out of you. You bet. Wow. You bet. And where did you do that? Right in the same studio, or? Oh yeah. 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 In one of the stages there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Recording stages. So. All right. Uh, so that was, that was my. Real performance, a fun time. I bet. Know. Uh, and then I uh, came back, got married. For, oh, then I went into the army, and after my six this, months. This is what what year? This would be in 1958, 59. Oh, 59. 58, 59. I went into the army, and then. Uh, you were drafted. No, you I was running ahead. Enlisted. <laughs> I enlisted in uh, in uh, National Guard. Uh huh. Because I didn't want to go overseas. Sure. But at that time, they were pulling up National Guards to go over to Vietnam and all. Yeah. So, uh, but I lucked out. Good. You know, and I got my job, and Don Arden let me out of my contract at, at Desert Inn. So I went into the service, and then when I got out... Wait a minute, uh, Desert Inn, you were in Nevada? Uh-huh. In, in Las Vegas? Yeah. Oh. I worked there for a summer. Uh-huh. Uh, doing Hallelujah Hollywood, or whatever. I see. I think that was the name of it. And then... Uh, when I got out of the service, where, uh, where did six you? Months. Where were you in the service? Fort Ord. At Fort Ord. Mm -hmm. Well, my old stomping grounds. Yours too. I spent, <laughs> I spent a lovely summer there. Yes, of course. You Most did. of it in the hospital with pneumonia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I made it through. Oh, you that's know. good. And actually, I had very good uh, relationships with guys and so forth there that I thought when I went in, I, I'm going to be like, uh, you know, I just ignored or whatever, because I'm not the real military kind of infantryman kind of guy. No, but you <laughs> you had a little background by marching in a band and knew something about right. uh, formations and right. ranks and yeah. files. And so I, I got along fine, and I had uh, met some really nice guys and things, so yeah. it turned out to be an okay experience. So your whole experience was that four door years? About yeah. Two years? Uh, that was six months, and then I attended... Then reserve meetings uh, two weekends, weekends a, a, a month and two summers or a two week stint in the desert every year for six years. Okay, that's, and that got pretty old. Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> so anyway, when I got out, then I got married to uh, one of the dancers that I had met at the Moulin Rouge. Oh, really? And she was Miss Hollywood and oh. Miss. Uh, uh, what was it? The commercial rain. Uh, Shampoo, a little the girl with the yellow slicker and the yellow umbrella dancing around. Oh yes. Uh, yes. What was it? What was the name of the shampoo? Yeah, White Rain. No. White Rain. Was that it? 
Maybe. Something like that. Anyway, I, most people know it. Yeah. Except I have a senior man. <laughs> <laughs> so from there, then I, I, I needed a job. Sure. And I went back to my uh, leader at uh, CBS Mailroom, Edith, uh, who was from New York. And I said, Edith, I need a job. So she hired me. Hmm. So I went back to CBS, TV City, and uh, worked in the mailroom. In the mailroom. And Three you, months, and then I went into... Did you get to deliver mail to all the people? Oh, or? all the... Dozier, all these people, so Frankenheimer, all these yeah, people were great, working there. Great way to meet people oh, in, yeah. in the business. Oh, yeah. yeah. I used to visit all the way. <laughs> all right. My tours, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and that was when they were doing Brigadoon with Nureyev mm -hmm. and... Uh, what was it? Uh, well, you know, Danny Kay was there, Re uh, Red Skelton was mm -hmm. there, Judy Garland was there, you name them, they were all there, uh -huh. right? And so I worked from the mailroom, I went to scheduling, and then to uh, film scheduling, and then I went to uh, program coordinator, mm. and so forth, and then I couldn't get past a certain area, right? So uh, I left and went to ABC. Oh, yeah. And I was a unit manager there for about four months, and then they had a cutback. So last one hired, first one first to go. First one to go, yeah. So then I got, from well, there, I got a job at the Clark Productions. What, what was your job at ABC? Oh, no, it was uh, ABC. It was uh, unit manager. Unit manager. You know, the guy with sure. the budgets and the bills right. and all that. Had you had any experience with that sort of thing? A little bit, not much. You know, I'm a quick learn. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I handled all of Dick Clark's shows. Uh -huh. You know, uh, and then when that fell apart because they lost shows, it was a bad period of time. This would have been when? About 61. Ah, yes. You know, t the television was cutting back on mm -hmm. uh, musicals and things, you know. Right. So after that, I got a job, permanent job with, uh, as a producer, uh, they call them line producers or social producers on uh, American Bandstand and Mama Cass's Get It Together. Mm -hmm. So I did both of those for Dick. Hmm. Then uh, we were getting close to being let go again. Right. So then I got my job over at Bob Banner Associates uh, to work with uh, Dick Foster. So I was his AP on uh, the first show was Peggy Fleming in Sun Valley. Hmm. I remember All that. All locations of uh, filming. Uh -huh. And it was natural ice, you know, in the cold of the mountain, mm -hmm. Jean-Claude Keeley, Carpenters, a whole bunch of people. Mm -hmm. Then I did, I did uh, Peggy Fleming in Moscow and Leningrad, so I had to go ahead and survey Le Moscow and Len uh, Leningrad to find locations, and we performed all over. This is all for Wad Banner? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I did uh, a lot of stuff in London, and did a whole survey of uh, theaters. We'd see two theaters a day, Willie and I, uh, in two different countries mm. for a tour, live tour. Mm -hmm. So we went all over Belgium and France and Germany and Austria and every place to find theaters and to, wow. to create a tour. What an experience. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I was the, like the company manager now they call them company managers. I was finding the location, mm -hmm. estimating the uh, the seating capacities uh, versus X by, uh, costs and so forth. Mm -hmm. So we did that, and it was not easy. It was not easy. In fact, our opening night at Bublingen, Germany, uh, with the ice show on a stage, we had these French ice guys, you know, compressor and the whole floor and everything. Mm -hmm. They could not get the ice made. Oh, dear. So I had to fly in uh, <laughs> an expert that used to work for the Follies, Ice Follies, uh, over to Germany to help us get the ice made. So My we could goodness. go on. So it was, it was a lot of... Uh, and then we shot in Germany, in Davos, Switzerland, and we shot at uh, Neuschwanstein, Mm -hmm. Outside of Munich, right, and uh, then we were to go on our t live tour. Did you have a chance to go through the castle there? Uh, Neufonstein? Mm -hmm. I saw places you'll never see. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. There's basements and things. Oh, and, you know. Yeah. There. And that was only most of my life uh, in the production uh, area. I enjoyed because I always had to go for survey. 
mm-hmm. to make sure we had the hotel <coughs> place, we had bathrooms, we had catering, uh, we had transportation, uh, where does the sun come up and where does the sun go down, uh, all of that kind of stuff, and negotiate local labor, wow. and set up bank ac- Swiss bank accounts, mm-hmm. and uh, do visas, for for the crew mm-hmm. and and everything and so that was a huge growing experience. Yeah, what do you think? You, I hope you had a staff to help you help you do that. It was me, you, and my friend Willie Vitak, who is an Olympic skater, pair skater in Austria, uh-huh. who we brought over to skate with Peggy. So he became my uh, my guy Friday, whatever you want to call right. it, and he would translate in all these German theaters oh. to me what was being said. Mm-hmm. I usually, not at the time, but when we get outside, I said, Willie, what did they say? Did they say blah, 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 blah? It was usually, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. So that was, uh, actually, all of my sh- location shooting was wonderful trips. Was this for one show or se- a series of shows? Uh, specials. Specials, uh, television specials. Okay. Sun Valley, Idaho, uh-huh. uh, Germany, Austria, Germany, mm-hmm. uh, Swiss, and uh, Munich, or, uh, Moscow. Yeah. You know, and then after that, uh, I was I did uh, the two big specials for Lily Tomlin. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? Did I did? Andy your- Williams. I did all, a lot of about four of his shows in Mexico and Austria and different places. Andy Williams? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, uh... Were you, uh, was your wife ab- ever able to travel with you? Well, I, w- I was married to another wife. Oh! <laughs> Miss Hollywood was... Uh, Miss Hollywood, yes, Miss, Miss, uh... She, she was Miss Hollywood, she actually. Was, oh, I see. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, I didn't take her along because I had two boys. Uh-huh. So she stayed home. I see. Except for going to Leningrad and Moscow. There's two boys from, from wife number two. From wife number one. Number one. My oldest boy is now 50. Really? My youngest boy is 47. They're key grips in feature films. Oh. They've done a lot of location work, even in Europe and foreign countries. Hmm. Good for them. Yeah. So I didn't have to worry so much about them. Yeah. (laughs) You were lucky. (laughs) Yes, I was. Very lucky. (laughs) Yes, indeed. They finally got their act together. Mm -hmm. They're doing very good. Great. Well, Peggy Fleming uh, apparently is still doing well. She is. And uh, looks great. Yes. Uh, so that's, you know, and I did about, well, from 1970, and I did Donnie and Marie talk show and, and Big Brother for three years and, you know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, so I did all that. Then when I got to 65, I retired. Because mm-hmm. I went to on about 50 interviews for talk shows and so forth, which I've done game shows. I did Pressure Luck also with Bill Carruthers. Oh. But it was on uh, 9.30 on CBS mm-hmm. morning shows all year, three years. So you did Big Brother not too far from where we're sitting. That's right, right over, <laughs> right over there. Right over there, someplace. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Three years. So, what, was, what was your job there? Well, I was like the unit manager, production Again. manager, you know, hiring and firing the cameraman and, mm-hmm. and uh, contracts and uh, all kinds of stuff. Hiring and firing cameramen, they're not, they're not all CBS employees? No, we hired freelance guys. Oh, really? Well, they weren't freelance yet. Can I, yeah. shall I tell you what? They were mm-hmm. college graduates uh-huh. out of USC and uh-huh. UCLA. I see. Who needed a job. Sure. Great experience. Very great experience, yes. Most of the cameras on that show are are, are mounted. Well, a lot of them are inside, but you know that, uh, I don't know whether I'm telling a secret, uh, you know, the main house, mm-hmm. there's a, a tunnel, not a tunnel, but a hallway that goes all the way around the, the house on the and, out, on and the, the lot, oh. and, you know, in their, and their, part, uh, their uh, garden area. Uh-huh. Well, the, that's got glass, so the cameras move. Oh, I see. Inside. Around. And then those that are up here, little pin cameras, mm-hmm. they add to the to the uh, camera. So the, the ones that move are shooting through the glass? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would think that would cause some problems with uh, 
reflection or something. No, they got it all worked. They had it all worked out. It was mm -hmm. a big. Uh, it was a big endeavor. I bet. And the production guys, uh, the techs, uh, Gene Crow and uh, another fellow, they're the ones that designed the whole setup. Mm -hmm. Very bright guys. Boy, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, he used to do. Uh, Gene used to be a TD on a lot of my uh, variety shows. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you've over the years picked up knowledge of certain people that you like to work with, and you'd bring them aboard whenever there was an opening. Huh? Absolutely, that was the that was the whole thing. Mainly because you know uh, what they do and how well they do it. Sure. And when you're keeping track of all that stuff, uh, you need people who really know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. See, the shows that we, I was doing, uh, big shows, those variety, I called them big because they were at that time. Yeah. Uh, they weren't repetitive like a studio show. Mm -hmm. They were all originals. So, But there was only myself and uh, an assistant and a script supervisor, and well, you could count them in one hand. Yeah, that we did this. The nucleus of the of the staff. Now they now their staffs usually up to about a hundred. Right. Most shows. Now how about how about the uh, executive producers and the producers? Now they they have their own unit, and they would hire you to come in and run the rest of the operation. Usually, yeah, what I see, like a production company, you're a production company, mm -hmm. and you're going to do this big special, say, in Canada. Right. And so I'd have to, uh, so you would hire me, and between you and his producer, mm -hmm. who the guys came up with the idea or the contract or the whatever with the star, uh, they would hire me, and I would assist in helping them program, uh, hire, fire, deal with the location, do all that stuff. Right. But of course they were more of the creative team with the writer. Mm -hmm. And I would just add to whatever I found on location that would be interesting or whatever. Yeah. And uh, so that was that period of time. Do we have much more time? Oh sure. Oh, you do? I, I, yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. I would think that on a show like Big Brother there'd be all kinds of problems that would pop up when, well, it, when you would least expect them. There were a lot of people on the on that show, on that job, taking care of the creative area. We had line uh, segment producers as well, you know, and so there was probably four or five of them. And of course, you know, they would all come up with their own segment. Yeah. And so I didn't have to deal with that unless they came to me and said, I need. Mm -hmm. And when they said, I need, that's what I would provide for I them. See. Uh -huh. And things like that. Of course, that show was on the air 24 hours a day on, I thought, online. I was hoping I could retire. <laughs> <laughs> but, but didn't work anyway. So, <laughs> so looking back on your career, what what uh, what are the two shows you most enjoyed? Would you say? Mm. Okay, I didn't tell you that I I lived in Aust Sydney, Australia for three years producing shows. No, when did that happen? Uh, Oh, God. Oh, that happened in the mid-70s, mm. right after I finished with Bob Banner and all of Perry Como and all those specials. Okay. And then I went to Sydney and produced with a friend of mine uh, variety shows with their uh, star, Julie Anthony. And so I went over and I would produce, uh, you know, choreograph. That's when I was choreographing. And I would choreograph and associate produce for camera and so forth, for Lily and the dancers. Hmm. And I'd work with my producer, Dick Foster, to come up with the creative area and or the music and, and what we're going to do to it and so forth, you know. Mm -hmm. So I did that for three years. I would go over for six months and come back for a month. I could only get a visa for that long, see. And then <laughs> I'd go back over for a second, I'd come back for a month, then I'd go back over there and come back, you know. I see. So until the uh, immigration started to figure out whose name is that on the credits, <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. when I figured I'd better come home. I see. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you thought of that because you hadn't mentioned choreography. <laughs> you know, I was, I've choreographed Perry Como in Austria and I've choreographed, uh, oh, a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, you know? right. Yeah. 
So, so you knew all, you knew Ray Charles, our, our Ray Charles with BPB. Uh, and Nick Perito, yes. Yeah. I know Ray very, very well. Sure. I knew him when he had heart transplant hmm. or bypass, what it was. Bypass. Uh, he did that when, uh, right after uh, Perry in Austria. Oh, he did? Yeah. Gosh. And uh, when we got back, he had that. And he was out walking a mile every day, I think a week after he got to the hospital. I don't know. He was just like a superman. Mm. The guy is just fantastic. Yeah, he sure is. Unbelievable. 93 or 4 now, I think. Uh-huh. Still yeah. going strong? Yep. Boy. I know, knew his whole family, so uh -huh. they were nice people. Yeah. Great. So what else can I tell you, Jerry? Well, tell me about some of the shows that you uh, really hated working on. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> there must have been one or two of those. Well, I'll tell you two that I... Uh, two, three. There's two that really made my, my life uh, very proud. That's Lily Tomlin in Vegas. Mm -hmm. That was when she, we did Sold Out with uh, uh, Tony Charmley. And I forgot the other director, but it was at the Caesars Palace. And she came down from the ceiling in a big uh, chicken egg, and mm -hmm. it cracks open. Oh. <laughs> and it's hilarious. Oh, right. And, of course, she did all of her characters, about six of them. Yeah. And uh, I just had a wonderful time on that one. I got a lot of respect from Lily. She's just an unusual performer that listens. Oh. Ah. Unusual right there. Right there. Yeah. She listened. Because I told her, this, this skit is going to cost you too much. Mm -hmm. She said, oh, I can't afford that. So what shall we do? So she pulled a meeting of the writers, the script, uh, production assistants, everybody. And we sat down and said, what can we do that's funny to replace this? Mm. And they came up with a, a skit that actually was probably funnier than what they had planned. Well. So, see... It, Sometimes it, it just works. She's a collaborator. She's yeah. a collaborator. She's a wonderful lady. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, in Australia, I really enjoyed working with Julie Anthony, who was the star over there. Mm -hmm. That name is familiar to me. I don't know that I'm I've sure ever seen it her. Is. Yeah. Well, she came over. Dick brought her over here to sing and see if they could get promoted. Yeah. But it didn't work too well, and she didn't like it over here. Oh, really? So she went back. Mm -hmm. And I think that's fine. Uh -huh. She's happy. She's up in the Gold Coast. Yeah. In a nice home. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Overlooking the beach. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so why not? A lot of the shows that you worked on in the early days uh, are now called reality shows, I suppose. Well, they yeah. were. We did in 19... Uh, what would have been about 70, 71. We did Love, 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 mm -hmm. which uh, was for Hallmark Valentine's Day special. Uh, Robert Wagner was the host we had Helen Reddy and Carpenters and a whole bunch of people on it. And what we did, though, we rented big, uh, uh, what are camper trailers, what do you call those, the 54-foot buses? Mm -hmm. And uh, Dick and I would drive the bus with a cameraman up to Big Sur. And we found a couple that lived in one of the caves on the beach. Uh -huh. And they were thinking of getting married. So we followed them around, what they did and so forth, and then we went to Ennis, Texas, and found a similar situation, mm -hmm. and filmed them, all, you know, how they, as lovers, as friends, as whatever, you know. Sure. And then we, uh, another couple in San Francisco. So uh, the guys in San Francisco decided to get married. Hmm. So we all flew up to San Francisco and filmed their, their wedding and all. And then when we came back to the Troubadour, uh, all those kids were there. We brought them all in from all over the country. Wow. Reality here. Yeah. And uh, so then they were, uh, it was like a big uh, performance, you know, mm -hmm. of all these unknown people thinking of getting married. Oh, but earned. So you saw their background, and then you saw the culmination of it. Hmm. And so, that, reality is nothing new. Nothing new to you, that's for sure. <laughs> well, see, Bob also created a candid camera with uh, the original creator. Oh, well, really? It Alan was Funt? Very, Al, Alan Funt. They worked together, I think, in New York. Oh, really? Creating that show. Well, he was, he was the director of Omnibus in Chicago, out of WGN. 
Really? And he was the uh, producer director of Gary Moore Show, and of the in New uh, York. In New York, mm -hmm. he he started from Chicago and went to New York. Then he came here because of Carol Burnett. Ah. So uh, he owned Carol Burnett, so to speak. You know, he had her under contract. So that's when that company moved to Los Angeles when she got her series on uh, CBS. Ah, okay. Hmm. So what else? Let's see. What else do would you like to hear? Well, I assume <laughs> that you're not still doing dancing, are you? Where are you? Oh, I quit uh, mm -hmm. when I turned 70 uh -huh. because my back was killing me. And uh, when I turned 70, I was going to prepare a tap routine because my family in Iowa had never seen me since I left mm. dance. So I was going to do a tap number for my birthday I was throwing party uh -huh. <laughs> back there for myself Good. and I spent one rehearsal two hours and it went pretty well the next day I came back to do another to finish it up I could not lift my legs oh dear so I scratched all that yeah. and then uh, later I just couldn't move my back was just killing me mm. so I had back surgery on L3 4 and 5 oh so they had to pull away all the arthritis. Uh -huh. I got that, so now I'm in pretty good shape. Yes. But, uh, you know, I stopped teaching when I was 70. You were teaching as well? I've taught all my life. Really? Yeah, I started teaching at 10 uh, for my sister, who had a dance studio. Hmm. And then I had a dance studio back in uh, the early 60s, out here. And then I would teach... Uh, Seminars, you know, uh, all over uh, for tap and jazz. Hmm. And, but then, uh, uh, then when I retired, though, uh, I couldn't do my job because nobody. I was too old, you know. They, sure. They didn't want somebody to say no to them. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know that's the problem. Yeah. So anyway, I went back to working uh, background as an extra. Mm -hmm. Until one day, I just couldn't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, know, so, I know what you mean. <laughs> I left that one. And then my friend that I, I nurtured along back in uh, Peggy Fleming days in Europe, uh, he has the biggest, one of the biggest ice uh, productions in the country now. Mm -hmm. He took over and he has a lot of ice floors and things. And he also uh, has a contract for all of the uh, Royal Caribbean ice shows on ship now. Mm -hmm. But he called me because he wanted to do a show called Broadway on Ice starring Dorothy Hamill. Uh -huh. And guest stars would be like Davis Gaines who performed a thousand some performances of uh, Phantom of the Opera, Leslie Ockham's, uh, oh God, uh, just all kinds of stars. And they would, they would rotate. In other words, we might have Davis here and a week later, we'd have so-and-so there, you know. Mm -hmm. And I did that for three years as company manager. Mm. And that would be doing transportation, uh, scheduling, uh, uh, housing, uh, permits, wow. uh, buses. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a real, like, touring a Broadway show. Yeah. It was a cast of about close to 28, plus crew uh -huh. of about six or seven. Wow. Gee, the, the, all of that detail work w would be something that most people couldn't handle very well. Yeah. But you obviously have an affinity for that. Well, or, I didn't know I had an affinity. Had <laughs> well, I'll tell you two. I'll tell you two. Uh, let's see, I, may, I think I've got two stories. I'll t tell you one story. You know, when I told you we were shooting for a month in Moscow and Leningrad with Peggy. Yeah. Of course, back then we were shooting 16 millimeters. Mm -hmm. And then we'd bring it back here and uh, edit on film, do the post scoring, and then we would transfer it to videotape. Oh, okay. For air at uh, CBS or NBC. Mm -hmm. Well, we spent that almost a month in, in Leningrad, Moscow, shooting all the Moscow ballet, Peggy Fleming here, Peggy Fleming there, this Moscow circus with the bears and all that stuff, right? Mm hmm. Coming home. This is, of course, behind the Iron Curtain, you remember. Right. Uh, coming home, I, I told the, this young man, now, here's the money. You buy an extra seat on the flight 
to strap in the negative. Hmm. <laughs> Do you know what's coming? No. He went, but the, the uh, film didn't arrive. Oh, gosh. Didn't know. So, and Peggy had already left for home. Oh. So we, uh, we were going nuts. You know, I'll bet. Total crazy. I think it was like, it was either 24 hours or 72 hours. It was short. Uh, my carne people found it on a dock in Manhattan. Hmm. How did it get there? Nobody, nobody knows, nobody knows. <laughs> but they found it. Yeah. So then we had a show. You know? Wow. So that was a pretty stressful yes, period indeed, of time. Yes, indeed, I'll bet. You know? So Tell I've had a few stressfuls. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about Dick Clark. Oh, Dick. Yeah. Oh, Dick. I've always liked Dick. Uh -huh. I always, and I still do, and I feel sorry for what he went, had to go through, and I thought, oh, please, don't put him on camera now. I mean, it's just... It's not right, yeah. you know. But he evidently wanted to do it. Uh, but see, I did those two shows with him uh, for about six months, and we always got along. In fact, mm -hmm. I was, I, uh, he had me do the judging for one of the dance contests he did, mm. you know, on the show. Uh -huh. So I, I toured with that. Good. And I went back to Philadelphia to do his 50th anniversary show or whatever mm. it was and everything. So I knew him pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, after that, you know, I did shows that were in coordination with Dick Clark Productions. I did the uh, Miss uh, uh, Daytime Emmys. Okay. I did uh, Around the World in 10 Days for uh, Alter Quiz. Mm -hmm. I'll remind me to tell you about that one. And, uh, and all of these things. And then I, I did uh, stuff, stuff. And then I did Donnie and Marie Talk Show. So I've known Dick, I had known Dick for probably 25, 30 years, right, off and on. When I was hired, when uh, Donnie and Marie Talk Show was having trouble. So I was hired to straighten them out. And I got them started. And I had not met Dick on the, on the show until one morning, one shoot day, he walks into the stage and he says, oh, thank God, you're here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought that was the best compliment yeah. of my life. Boy, I guess you know, because he he was felt secure since I was there to help. Yeah, yeah. You know, you knew it was in good hands. Yes, you don't get that any any place. No, much no, that's often. great. Yeah. So. Well, I know he was a very nice man, but I also know that he was uh, a bit uh, penny pinching now and then. Oh, are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Why did you have to bring that? Yes, he was. <laughs> But that's all right. If he wanted it bad enough, yeah. he figured out a way. Right. You know, he yeah. was... But Carrie was the secretary when I started working with him. Mm -hmm. It's his wife, you know. Yes. And she's just a wonderful lady. Oh, just a wonderful terrific. lady. terrific. So... Ah, there, there you are. are. I learned that uh, Frank Bazee's caretaker now, Frank having had his major stroke, mm -hmm. is the same caretaker that Dick Clark had. Oh, really? Uh, oh, my. Bobby Brzee got yeah. together with Kerry, and, yeah. and they worked that out after Dick's uh, death. Oh, my. So he's very lucky because he's an outstanding person. Yeah. yeah. Apparently. Well, that's a... Uh, see, I volunteer over at the Motion Picture Hospital. Oh, good. Uh, two days a week, two mornings a week. Yeah. Uh, and I t I'm a pool buddy, so I take in wheelchair or people who are, have trouble walking and so forth mm -hmm. into the pool. And I do workouts with them Good. Uh, for an hour in the pool. Mm -hmm. And my uh, one lady I've had for three years, she's 91 now, and she could not get out of the chair mm -hmm. when she started. Well, I had her, before Christmas, this Christmas, I had her walking into the pool and out of the pool without the chair. Wow. We were doing the cha-cha-cha. <laughs> we were... <laughs> We were just doing all kinds of things. Yeah. But unfortunately, she had a setback at Christmas time, so now she oh. can't. So we just go in and make. She feels good after being in the water because she feels like she's accomplished something. Yeah. Well, that's that's important, really. She's just very strong-minded lady. Uh -huh. Wonderful too. Oh, terrific. Yeah. Well, it's wonderful you can do work like that. Yes. Uh, I assume that you are a fan of the dancing shows, Dancing with the Stars. And oh, yeah. So you think you can dance? Yeah. 
I do. I watch uh, Dancing with the Stars most mm -hmm. because I, I really think Derek. He's wasting his time on that show. Yeah. He should be on Broadway choreographing big stuff. Yeah, I mean his choreography is just fantastic. Yeah, oh, just wonderful. And he does himself a fantastic dancer. He, he is. Yeah. I mean, the guy is just unbelievable. Yeah, uh, you know, and I watch these guys. Uh, you know, like on the award show last night, the the uh, Tonys, you know, mm -hmm. uh, they did some pretty good dancing, some of the groups. But, you know, the, a lot of it is this uh, rap kind of dancing, which yeah. really, I don't find it There's not, mu not much to it at it all. It doesn't feel visual to me. No. Uh, you don't get emotional with it. You don't get any, I just don't get it. Yeah. Get it. Yeah. I, I love disco. That was my big thing. I used to go to Studio One and dance sure. and so forth. But uh, this doesn't even have that flow, you know. Mm -hmm. Gets you excited. So, the other the dancers last night on some of the uh, Broadway shows, it was very good. That's We're going to see the Scarsboro uh, guys uh, in a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. which is supposed to be good. Wife number two is still with you. Yes, yeah, she's an interior designer. Good. And we both met at EST training. At what training? EST training. Oh, EST training. You know. I forgot what that is. Uh, Warner, Air, Warner Earhart, whatever. Oh, Warner yeah. something. Yeah. Uh, be here now. Mm hmm And you can't change. You won't change. You, nobody can change you. You are who you are. Okay. Well, we've been together now 30 years. Hmm. And uh, so we, we do... Great. Pretty good. We do a lot of traveling mm -hmm. now that I'm retired, and she's basically retired. Uh huh. Uh, so. Uh, and the boys are doing well too. So you have. Uh huh. Yeah. And I have five grandkids. Oh, perfect. So, so, so do I. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, it, put her there. Makes you feel proud. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So. Well, Dee, we have covered a good amount of your. Life and it was easy. See, see, I don't know what to tell you, but uh, you were so worried about this, and yeah. there's nothing to it. We just I chat know. and have a good I time. Know. I know. There's probably more I could tell you, but I won't, <laughs> what, what? <laughs> unless it comes to me right, right what, off. What right am away. I? What am I missing? Is there something else? Like I don't the, know. Like the choreography you didn't mention. <laughs> well, I did choreograph the uh, winners in uh, in Australia in Vienna of the Viennese waltz dancers. There's four couples. You know, they have contests, uh -huh. uh, dance contests over there. And there were four couples that won first place in the uh, Viennese Waltz. So we were at the Black Castle. I can't remember the German name for it, but it was translated into the ba Black Castle. Black Castle. And we shot them in the uh, rotunda, so I choreographed that. Mm. And it was gorgeous. Great, I bet it was. Yeah. Mm. We shot Peggy Fleming, uh, videoed Swan Lake of her out on the uh, Bay of Finland mm -hmm. off of uh, the coast there in uh, Leningrad because it was all frozen. So we'd take the uh, buses out onto the ice in the ocean mm -hmm. and uh, we cleared a nice circular ice area. And she, would, she danced uh, or skated Swan Lake in her little Swan Lake Two two, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it was uh, cut together with the Bolshoi, uh -huh. Swan Lake. So it was counter counteracting. Okay. It was. It's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. Boy, it sounds good. Yes. You ever had a hankering to see some of these specials you did a long time ago again? Well, I have a number of them, but Do I don't have, have time to <laughs> look at them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, know. they're most of them are on VHS, so you see, uh, yeah. they're kind of extinct now. Right. Yeah, okay. Unless I take them someplace and I'm transferred. Well, the grandkids hopefully will take an interest in watching one from one of these days. Well, maybe. I doubt it. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> unless, unless it pops out of an electronic device of some kind. They are going to be interested. Mm, no, right. that's right. <laughs> Oh, so, boy. Well, Dee, it's been wonderful talking with you. Same. Thank and, you. And um, this is for the Pacific Pioneer Broadcaster's audio history of uh, Dee Baker, recorded on June the 10th of 2013 at the CBS Studio Center in Studio City, California, on, as I said, June 10th of 2013. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Jerry Fry. I'm the audio historian for Pacific Pioneer Broadcasters. 
Thanking you very much for listening.